Today on review, we are looking at SSSets for the Xbox 360, also available on the PlayStation 3. SSSets have had a very strong following in the fan community, and pretty much been there since the PlayStation 2 day with SSS Tricky, but it's been a few years since we have actually had a SSS game, let alone an actual legitimate snowboarding game. And here we are now with the hype going into the game and the enjoyment level that come from it, it highly low, but don't get me wrong, SSS has some problems. First of all, the story mode here, which is barely low. Mainly, the whole story of SSS is one the Et member have went off and started his own little group of say and you guys pretty much have a competition with each other to see who get down the nine deadly ascent all around the world. So the story pretty much followed this, and every region you go to, you will unlock more and more character for your team, which will help you an overall standing of doing the nine deadly descents. The only issue with the deadly ascent stuff here, don't think this is a cake ride. This game is difficult on many levels. Might it be pits or caves you cannot see without a headlamp and by that you won't be able to see if you're doing heavy tricks. And it's just a lot here that wants you dead and fit to die a lot. But on the upside of that, after you fail a deadly ascent a couple of times, you will have the option to cork gip it. Which some player might sub them know that, but just know it's there. If you get too frustrated, you can just power through the game. But on the other side of the story here, as you unlock more and more character, instead of getting an actual full cutscene for the character, you get a little comic strip that tells you all about the character and who they are and what they do. The only issue here is, is of course the cutscene go a little too fast and in many cases it's very hard to read the comic book panel to figure out who these people are. But then again, this is an SSS game and many of us are not really playing it for story, which is perfectly fine. And that where we get into the other game mode here where you have a four, which works very similar to the single player game, the only this and it, no story, and you traveling around to all 156 drop point which might be wasted tricks events or just surviving getting down the mountain with random gadgets such as a hand uh, squirrel suit oxygen tank body armor headlamps and so on and this is where the game mainly shine if you want a single player affiliate while along with a little bit of multiplayer heal because when you do this event you everybody on your friendlet who have played the game you will be able to see them go one and around in the track with you and you will have the ability to beat them goals and metal will be added to you money will be added to you which by money you can end up buying new balls item for your character geotags and unlockable add-on to your character with the add-on or mutation as they want to be called, pretty much give you a boot, might it be more boot, tricky, help, whatever it might be, for a couple of levels before they disappear. And then you got the geotap, which whenever you go to die and you use a rewind feature, you will be able to drop geotags in the level for other people to find, and you will gain money and a billion, and then whoever will find it will also gain money and a billion. But they're playing it to the downside of, of course, the rewind feature, which is the only way you can play geotags. It, of course, is dramatically useless and irritating, or may not be totally useless. In some scenario, it's very useful, but in the overall scheme of things, when you use it, it takes so much of your points away from you, it don't just take away the points of whatever trick you're doing when you screw up, it will also take tricks away from your bank of points you already have. And if you're not careful, you can go back to zero before you get to the end of the track and end up not doing very well in the wanking system. And then that brings up to the other issue of this is the core how some of the levels are made. It is very detailed and crowded, which make the game look fantastic. But the only issue here, if you get stuck in the drama tree, you can of course you be stuck there and your point will be taken away after a certain amount of time or the game will just peel out kill you. And then the only option you have left is the rewind which will also take your points. But in the actual game here, outside of them problem, you can it's fantastic all around. You don't have any real frame for a frame weight issue. The gameplay is solid with multi button and multi combination and added night vulnerability to it to get high score and a competitiveness against your friends. The only problem is with the friend wanking is a quote from the geo tag and then friends are friends on your friend list affect to be spammed a lot from people you don't even know just wanting to be your friend so they can compete with you cause if they beat your goal they will get more money so that it built upon 
having as many friends as you can playing this game. So bet to be fam a lot if you have a lot of fun playing that or place a lot of geotags. And now outside of the game, it calls the menu for how the shopping menu work is all the items in the shop to buy is randomized. So you have to pretty much pick what you have in front of you or hold off your money and buy something greater later on. It worked perfectly fine in the long term, but the sad part is when you get higher and higher level as your character, which, as I said before, you gain billion, which you can live, level your character up to level 10. And when you get in higher level, you will have ability to carry more object with you, and you have to go through like three to four menus just to attack two things, which is a little frustrating. But not as frustrating as the overall menu system is. The menu system is all around horrible. You only can see your friend score if you exit out of the game and in the menu you will see who will beat your score. Which you can call hit the back button and go to whatever event they beat your score in. That will perfectly fine. The problem is, is if you're not doing shortcut to get around, you ending up going to 5 to 6, some cases 10 menu to any do anything in the game. And it just drags down the civilian of that fun game. The game is fun as long as you end the game. The problem is that once you get into the menu, the menus are cluttered, confusing, and take a while just to get you to how to navigate the menu, which no game should have that. This should be queen and slick and direct to the point. And that sadly it not. But as for other game modes here, we also have global event, which people can make their own events, set it for time limit, set what type of play I'm on or they want, they want wasting tricky or whatnot. They can set up where only friend can play or anyone can play and buy in point that you have to pay to get in the way set. Which for every person who entered the way had to put up some money. The money will be added to a pot and then whatever you set the time for, whoever at the end of that time will get the money. This is a quick way to get money in the game here is by doing so. And it worked flawlessly with vent that had already set up going for like two, three billion dollars in in-game money you can win. While on to some if you just want to set up an event for your friends and see who the best is overall. And on the sense of the money scale here, you have the ability to call it do microtransaction in it to buy point to pretty much buy whatever you want for your character, might be quote, bull, item, whatever. But sadly, do not fall for it. The money that you will spend in real money for artificial money can be given to you only in a matter of minutes if you actually play the game. So do not fall for actually doing microtransaction in this. If you want to be whipped off, more power to you, but that is my warning to you. So overall, SSS is a great game, menus are frustrating, soundtrack is perfectly fine being we mix it on the spot depending on how good or bad you do, and have overall one of the best sound design in video games of late. So I give SSS a 4 out of 5.